looking at the countdown. So just do thank you. <clears throat> Shalom and welcome to tonight's Beit Rafa broadcast. I'm Rabbi Maurice Sklar, and uh, we have a very special evening tonight. Uh, I am, have my friend, uh, Tamara Winslow, who is uh, going to join me in just a few minutes. Uh, we, <clears throat> we're connected uh, via the uh, Zoom call, and I have my beloved wife Devora, who is definitely directing and producing this evening. So I'm just trying to be a good boy and do exactly. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yes. Okay. Yes, dear. Uh, listen, we need this. I want to start tonight with prayer. Israel is under a terrible attack right now. Many of you know. I, it has been a challenge just to get information, uh, just to find out what's going on. It's, it's a crazy time. It's a, it's a, it's an intense time, and I think it's a Psalm eighty three time as well. Yeah. Read Psalm eighty three, and you will see a clear uh, word about the, the restored nation of Israel in the end times and the terrible. Uh, conflict that has existed since, especially since uh, 1947-48, when uh, uh, we declared our, or they declared uh, our independence. <laughs> Ever since that time, uh, a state of war, uh, certainly in the spirit realm, has existed, <laughs> and it's a direct fulfillment of Psalm 83, and uh, and of course there is an actual, I believe we very well may be in the actual, uh, the, the fullness of that conflict is, is just exploding before our eyes, if we can get our eyes on it. But anyway, let's pray right now uh, for Israel, for Jerusalem, for the, for the people and the land. Uh, it's, it's a terrible uh, situation and uh, that <clears throat> being under attack. So <clears throat> right now, a Father, Abba Father, we come to you tonight crying out once again, save us, O oh Lord. Remember, remember your covenant. Remember the first covenant. Remember your promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember uh, your promise to your people. Remember Psalm 91, Lord, uh, uh, our land, our people are under attack, as you know, and uh, it's hard for us here to even know exactly uh, the information, but uh, we pray for wisdom for the leaders. We pray for safety. We pray for, for uh, divine protection. We ask for your angels to just continue to safeguard every soul, every soul in the land, everyone, even those that are attacking, forgive them. They know not what they do. Lord, have mercy. Uh, it just as the prophet said, in wrath, remember mercy, oh Lord God. We rebuke the fear and the terror. I, I just know that you are right there with us. But we claim you are our refuge and our fortress and our deliverer, our God in whom we trust. Yes, Father. Father, we ask for we ask for victory and the destruction of evil that we not perish off the face of the earth. And we ask you to turn every curse, turn it around into a blessing. Hallelujah. Protect us now and stand. As, as, uh, help us stand. Give our 
the leaders wisdom. Give them wisdom. And deliver us, O oh Lord. We agree, Lord. We agree for this in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, you know, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the shalom. And we pray that, that our enemies, uh, they, the Bible says, if our enemies come against us one way, they flee from us seven ways. So we thank you, Lord, for uh, performing, watching over your word to perform it. Yeah. And may every plan that you have for these last days be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. And, you know, we just have to trust and stand. It seems like uh, in yeah, I, my life, at least, uh, maybe it's intercession, I'm not sure, but uh, in my own life, when there's trouble in Israel, if there's war, if there's there's always, I, I just, I can feel it. I can actually, I, I experience it. And, but I, you know, uh, but I just believe God. You know, we also, you have to remember the body of Messiah. If one of us is suffering, all of us are. It's like if your little finger, your little finger, you get jam it in the car door or something. I did that one time with one of my fingers. And oh my God, God healed it in about six minutes. It was amazing. It was black and blue. <laughs> but But until that time, I mean, it hurts. And so... Uh, and remember, you know, uh, remember that scripture that says uh, he who touches Israel touches the apple of my eye. That's the, that's the uh, father speaking there. That's like poking a stick in God's eye. You know, it just <laughs> uh, don't do it. That's all. And uh, I'm sure, you know, this is a serious, uh, serious time. And uh, it's all been written in advance and uh thank god so uh anyway uh but this is a special night as well and i think it's very appropriate that uh uh dr tamara winslow uh, has a new book and she's been talking about it. in fact she we brought we, i've had her on several times and uh we we've, we've We've uh, talked about this book. She's had it in an ebook form, but the baby's been born and it's here. And so, anyway, uh, I want to bring on Dr. Tamara. What, dear? Tell her to hold up the book. Tell her to hold up the book. All right, she okay. will. I'm, it's a beautiful book, beautiful cover. I've seen it. Now I kind of have to walk <laughs> by faith and not by sight right now because I can't see uh, the monitor. I have this camera, but I know. She's there, and I <laughs> want to welcome you, dear Tamara. Uh, welcome tonight, and uh, we want to. I just want to introduce this book. It's called "The Drama of Trauma," and if there's ever a time of drama and trauma, there it's is. right now. My <laughs> God! But uh, that has a lot of uh, uh, implications, and uh, has many of us in our own lives as well. So. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, Tamara. Thank you, Maurice. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good to be on this this broadcast with you. And, and yeah. is, I just got the book in my hands today for the first time. So Hallelujah. 15, almost 20 years of waiting for this to come to fullness. So very exciting. <laughs> Praise God forever. Uh, you have uh, been a, a faithful teacher of God's word and a, a student as well and as a Bible scholar uh, I mean you're the real deal I'm you know uh, there's a lot of people uh, saying they understand know the Bible and there's a few few that have really paid a price I'm thinking of two uh, that I can think of right now I can actually say you really are a scholar one of them is Dr. Michael Brown yeah. and the other is Yours truly. No, her truly. 
Oh, is that her truly? Yours she's, truly? She, you know, yours truly is you, but you, you're talking about her. I'm talking to you. No, no, I, no she, yes, Tamara. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for the kind words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Yes, I'm yours truly instead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, tell us about your book. Well, um, like I said, I'll show you again. The, I think I sent uh, Devorah a couple of the JPEG of that. But um, this has been uh, close to almost 20 years of a project. Uh, it overlaps, of course, with a lot of other ones. But I would started working on uh, several other books. And as I got into the manuscripts of those other books that I was working on, I kept coming back to some passages in Jeremiah that uh, talked about something that go was going to reemerge in, in the times before the Lord's return, whenever that is. And uh, the more I looked at it and I thought, I can't write these other books until the, the book on trauma is done. And it's been, uh, it's been one of the most uh, intensive uh, books that I've ever worked on because it involves, uh, it involves much more than just psychology and clinical therapies and such, because the more I looked in scripture and was writing about this, I realized we there's hardly anything out there. And I'm sure that there's some that have done things on it, but there's hardly anything that uh, talks about the biblical and spiritual perspectives on trauma. What What is trauma exactly? And, you know, how uh, how do we define that, uh, especially in the in the the Christian world that that we're in now? How do well, we define? Whether, that? Yeah, whether it's Christian definition or regular definition, it's all the same. Um, the word trauma actually comes from uh, some Greek and Latin words that in you know that translate into our language as the word trauma. But uh, traumatine, which is one of the main ancient language words, it literally means to pierce, like with a nail or with a thorn or something. And uh, it's got to do with the sense of being exposed to an event or a situation or circumstances or even people that break down the inner resolve of an individual to what, that they're, they're literally paralyzed by the pain. And depending on the types of pain that it comes about, whether it's from disease or uh, relationship conflicts or war, or lack or whatever, there's so many things that can cause trauma, depending on what kind it is, it can actually move people into a place where they cannot cope with life. And then in extreme stages, the pain that, that literally paralyzes people to where that they can no longer cope or face any kind of stressful situation, it begins to accumulate. And it's just mounding more trauma and more pain and more suffering difficulties that are stresses that literally weaken the inner person so much that it eventually affects everything, their perception of themselves, how they think, how they feel, how they interpret events. Um, and basically it's, it's that concept of being pierced in your inner person so much that you just can't handle anything. And that's, you know, it, there's different degrees of it. Everybody faces it and suffers it differently. One person will be traumatized by one thing. Another person doesn't affect them. And you so know, it, uh, that this is, uh, uh, you know, some time ago, it was, there was a book, I think, um, called uh, The Age of Anxiety, or, you know, that was probably our generation, maybe, but uh, it's gone way beyond that now you know of course Yeshua also mentioned that in the last days uh, men's hearts have failed them for fear yeah. looking at those things but it 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 has really uh I have experienced much of this in my life and many uh those listening as well yeah. and uh, the whole world is in a place of great trauma now yeah. uh, and what is what is but God has the answer doesn't he yeah, very much so. In fact, Jesus indicated in John chapter 14, verse 27, another verse there as well, but, but he said something that made me realize that the, the events that people are going through, whether it's uh, extreme suffering, stress, fears, fear is actually something that causes trauma. 
Um, it's not the same thing as the trauma itself. But um, Jesus said in John 14, 27, he said, let not or don't permit your heart. And then he goes on there and saying to be troubled. But if you look in this word for troubled hearts, it's literally describing someone that's been traumatized. So Jesus said something that just actually blew me away. I could not figure how we've missed this because we use that scripture all the time, like for funerals or who knows, whatever. But it literally can be interpreted. Don't allow, don't permit your heart to be traumatized. And when I saw that, I thought there's something we can do. We can train people. And we can equip people to be preemptive so that when traumatic events may occur, it isn't that they're not traumatic and it isn't they don't stir an emotion, but we know how to delay or even diminish and defeat trauma before it can ever get a hold of our heart. But see, we're not living in an age right now where people do that because ever since, oh, I suppose early 1900s, it started it shifted from 250 years or so before that, where that people were so intellectual, they denied the existence of emotions. And then in the early 1900s on to about 1920 something, people began to be uh, influenced by their emotions. And now we've got a whole generation, if not two or three generations, that think with their feelings instead of with their, their heads. And what's happened is that we have got a platform that trauma can work with. It, um, it's, it's using the feelings and the emotions of people against themselves instead of them knowing how to fight it. In fact, there are people today that say that their identity is due to their trauma. And they don't understand that that does not have to belong to them and they can actually refuse it. But I, I'm almost wondering at times, and I've written about this in the book, whether people are enjoying being sad and they want to hold on to feelings and not just with self-pity, but they want to hold on to these feelings that are trauma. And, you know, we, we forget the greatest traumas that were ever dealt with were with Jesus on the cross. He had the piercing <laughs> between his hands and, and on his feet and in his brow and all that and his back. Well, uh, you, you and I, uh, we know, uh, we, I, we believe in the healing ministry. I mean, I, <clears throat> I've seen great miracles and healings also in the soul realm, and, yeah. and uh, I've experienced that myself. Uh, but the, uh, God has not left us without uh, a remedy or a hope. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what do what <clears throat> you know <clears throat> what what do we do when we are overwhelmed with life? What do yeah. we do? When you mean when things are going on in life that that can just thwart us and, and just literally make our uh, us feel dismantled in our emotions yeah. and thoughts. Yeah. Well, it, a lot of it goes back to where you came from. What kind of condition did you come into when you entered into that event, when that overwhelming thing? And so, for example, did, were there boundaries in our lives? Have we dealt with like the boundaries of self-control? Um, have we dealt with um, choices? You know, what's the condition of the will? And so a lot of times we play catch up when we try to help people that are traumatized because they're in a condition that facilitates the trauma. And so what I, I look at is I'm looking at the building blocks to not just uh, deal with those things that have not been established in so many people's lives, but then also making room for the spirit of God to work. Because if people don't believe that God can work and deal with this and that Jesus already has won the battle on the cross, then uh, if we don't know how to put those things in place, in most cases today, we're needing a divine manifestation of God's power. And I know for a fact, and, and I've seen this happen many, many, many times in the years of travel and ministry, were that individuals who were so traumatized and couldn't get out of the hole that they were in, a simple prayer where the presence of the spirit of God would come, that simple presence of God was so strong, 
it totally set them free. And I've talked to many, many folks years later who told me, they said, when you prayed, the presence of God came and I got healed of the trauma. Yeah. And they were told by therapists and doctors, oh, you're going to have this the rest of your life. And I said, no, you don't have to keep this. You don't have to have this the rest of your life. And I've seen people healed. Totally. Amen. That's a, that's a part of the grace of God, yeah. I believe. And, but Pete, you know, I've experienced it and probably you have too, Tamara, oh, yeah. Yeah. in different <laughs> ways. Uh, yeah. All of us, especially if you're really, if you're really seeking the Lord, I mean, the devil fights dirty. I, you know, I know we're more than a conqueror and we have all these promises and <clears throat> we have to fight the good fight of faith, but yeah. You know, somebody, sometimes uh, I know I've reached moments, many moments in my life where I've just been so overwhelmed with trauma, really trauma, mm -hmm. that uh, you, you begin to think, you know, I know, I know all these things. <clears throat> I know God can do it. I believe he can. I believe he wants to. Uh, yeah. What? can I do? My identity has been so shaped, if you will. So, you know, or I, I don't know how to say it. You could say it better. But. Well, in the book itself, I address the different types of ways that people, by even for self-help, how to walk out and deal with their trauma and that they don't have to keep it. But the thing is, so much has been at times embedded in the brain and even in the body that holds on to trauma, that they need to know how to shed that. They know how to need to know how to discharge it to Jesus because truthfully, Jesus carried every aspect of trauma. He I carried, like that word discharge. Yeah. I like that. To start dis, discharge it to Jesus. Yeah. yeah, it's just like you discharge it. You let it go and say, okay, Jesus, I'm letting this go to you. I'm not keeping it. Amen. Because the longer we keep something, the more we try to be our own savior. And, and what about, isn't forgiveness uh, a great part of this? I mean, we, we yeah. that's what, yeah, forgiveness, right? Yeah, that's part of it. Um, I, do, I do teach on that about that in the book. And I talk about the importance of forgiveness and not waiting to forgive. Because there's teachings out there today that say, well, you know, if somebody doesn't repent, you don't have to forgive them. That's not in the scriptures. And we've got to understand what it means is to let that go, to release it, to discharge that. And so sometimes, uh, you know, when I work with people that are dealing with that kind of thing and they don't have access to therapists or counselors or anything, I talk to them about learning to let it go, maybe writing it on a piece of paper or maybe taking communion or praise and worship. When you're feeling the absolute worst, that's when you need to praise. Yes, so very That's often our feelings are lying to us, aren't they? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's that's one of the things we have to identify um, in that because uh, even when somebody has been healed, say the trauma has been driven and you've prayed for them and there's great miracles, they still may have to change their thinking processes. Um, they may have to change habits that they've gotten in, uh, that they've, you know, things they've been practicing that reinforce the trauma. Uh, there's there's all sorts of things that are involved with it. But what I love about what Jesus did on the cross, there's not, as far as I can discern, hardly anything that happened on the cross that wasn't a different aspect of trauma. Um, everything from, you know, his feet being pierced, everything from the crown of thorns. Well, it's all those traumas piercing the head, the brain, <clears throat> and that whole mindset issue. So recognizing what he turned, he hook on and then discharging it saying lord i'm not keeping this but it takes time for people to really grasp that I, i've been thinking about a scripture all day today and um it's go it's, uh, go, go go come on yeah, yeah preach it's, it. it's, it's, <laughs> hey like it <laughs> in yeah. deuteronomy chapter two i've been thinking about this because um he said to to um he said to the messengers that were sent to deal with Sihon, king of Heshbon, and it says, the Lord said unto me, behold, I, I have begun to give Sihon, 
the, and his land before you. And see what happened when the Hebrew children were going in to possess the land. God had given it to them, but they had to possess it. They had to take ownership. He said, I've begun to give it to you. And see, a lot of people are still in that beginning. They've never accessed and taken hold of what belongs to them. And it says, I've you know, begun to give Sion his land before you. Begin to possess it that you may inherit the land. And there's, a, there's another verse alongside, uh, alongside of that, which it says, go in and possess the land. Well, go in and possess this land. Take those truths and own those things. And I've been thinking about this all day because I think I, I see so many people that are so trapped in the old things that don't belong to them anymore. And they don't understand we've got to apply possess what's been given to us and take a hold of what this is because trauma is a trespasser. And you know, I'm, people... I'm thinking right now of a, a, I know it's more, she's more kind of pop, but it's an anointed teacher, more pop psychology maybe, but uh, a number of years ago, I read a book by Joyce Meyer on the battle for the mind. And yeah. I, I think I think it really, it, and then more recently, there was a book by uh, uh, Pastor Bill Johnson on the war is in your head. Yeah. Uh, there's a big war going on in our heads, uh, aren't in there, <laughs> uh, but the mind, and, and then of course, renewing the mind is, is what uh, Romans 12 says. So this is all a part of that, uh, taking that inner life. Yeah, this in the land within. Possessing the land within. Amen. Yeah. You know, I think probably one of the greatest possessions anyone could have would be a book of the promises of God. Amen. And then the memorization of those and the reiteration of those, but not just, you know, one, one place in Proverbs, it says attend unto, pay attention to what these things say, because we're just casually embracing them. And it, honestly, it takes some work. You say, well, we don't want to get into works. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Dead works. I'm talking about apply yourself, apply these truths. Meditate upon them until they become your own, right? Yeah, yeah. And where that, that's the first thing comes out of your mouth when a trauma happens. Um, I had something happen a couple of weeks ago, um, actually March. I was driving and, and sitting at an intersection waiting across the road and minding my own business. And the next thing I knew, something, boom, hit the back of my car and my head hit back. And I thought, what was that? And then, boom, hit me again because I was sitting there and I, you know, I had a rear end collision. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, what just happened? And I really didn't think about the injuries and I really didn't feel injured per se or that. But um, next thing I knew, the young woman who was driving the car behind me ran up to the car and she's crying and everything. And, and she said, it was totally my fault. It's totally my fault. I still hadn't figured out what had happened. You know, I remember. It's so funny. I had uh, Dvorah's with me. <laughs> I, was, I was in Jerusalem. It was, we were going to, uh, to a church. And, and this old, old cab driver, Israeli cab driver, or whatever no. yeah just an old man well he was an old man anyway he rammed our taxi from the back twice three, times. three oh no three times chris mitchell's car oh it was chris okay well anyway we're on our way to this uh it was bob white yeah i have a funny story about that i did no, really no, quick no no sweetie sweetie but but i got i got this whiplash and it was uh, but i didn't i thought i was fine but i was like yeah. really i was injured yeah. Uh, and then we made it to the church <laughs> and Bob has this gift of faith, you know, Oh, be healed, you know, but it really happened. <laughs> that Israeli paramedic was sitting there. It just, but anyway, <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. He said, well, get on the stage. You know? <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, it, yeah, those, those yeah, you got hit. I but got, I really did get hit. Yeah. yeah. Trauma. But the thing is, is I've been, you know, focusing on these things on trauma for so long. Mm. And I sat there and thought, huh, what just happened? And I still didn't register. And then she runs up to talk to me. And so I get out the car. I, I look at her vehicle. It's totaled. The mm. front air, the front uh, 
the area oh, just yeah. like an accordion. It was so crunched. Oh, no. Oh, She's no. crying. And I looked at her and I'll say this carefully. I had a word of knowledge about what was going right. on in her life. And so without thinking about what had happened, I, I reached out and she says, I can't afford a new car. I don't know what I'm going to do and on and on and on. And I looked at her and I said, honey, I said, I know somebody that can help you. Will you let me pray for you? Amen. She's crying. She goes, yes, please, please pray for me. And so I'm standing there thinking, I just had a car accident and it's like it never happened. And I was able to pray for her. And I walked away and I thought, Wow, this yeah. trauma stuff is really working. <laughs> yes, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that traumas don't uh, happen. Yeah, yeah, and they do they, happen. And more than just happen, I mean, <clears throat> the, and it's it's I guess how do you how do you exchange it? How do you, you know, because it says the the scripture you said piercing uh, scripture yeah. Isaiah fifty three yeah. says yeah. he was pierced through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for us. Yeah, and and how? So we have to make this ch exchange somehow. I, See, I that's know. why on the cover, there's a crown of thorns, and then the two. Uh, there it actually probably should have been three or four spikes, but but the thing is, is that these were there because I want people to understand the drama of the piercing, wow. and the where how that Satan has worked so hard, but Jesus already has endured all of that. Amen. Amen. And it's, it's such a powerful truth. And so learning how to discharge that mm. and release it to the Lord, there's all sorts of things that can be done, both naturally and spiritually. And of course, when uh, the thing is, is that when the presence of God comes with the anointing, if you're praying for somebody, they actually, sometimes people don't have the strength in this day and age right now to even know how to let go. They don't know how to dismantle this stuff. And so that's where the power of God is so important because when the power of God hits somebody like that, um, it's like the shackles, it's like the grip that that evil work of trauma has got a hold on somebody and trapping them in their brain, binding up their emotions. Cause you actually have two, two thinking centers. Your physical heart actually has a memory center all itself. Wow. And then you've got the, the areas of your brain and your cells remember. There's all sorts of, even your DNA remembers. But learning how to let go of that sometimes is more difficult when people are so bound up. It, and that's where the anointing of God comes to where yeah. that it actually will reach in and loosen those things so they can be shed. In now, fact, in fact, I think there's more than just the anointing of God. I okay. believe there are gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Gifts of healings for yeah. uh, these, uh, not just physical, but but th there's there's pain. I know yeah. this for yeah. sure. There's there's pain that goes far deeper than just uh, even torture, physical torture. There's, I mean, I was watching, <clears throat> I was, you know, I was uh, watching this documentary of Van Gogh, just a few, yeah. the, the artist, just a few yeah. days ago, yeah, <laughs> and and. You know, uh, and and the the terrible, uh, you know, and artists they're wired so sensitive. You know, uh, I should know about that. <clears throat> and and you know, Schumann, Schumann died and it, it went crazy. A great composer, but <clears throat> these are these are great men that have been tormented. They didn't know how. They didn't know how to fight back. Yeah, yeah. In the spirit. But this book tells you how, doesn't it? Yeah, it tells you how. Um, the, in fact, <coughs> somebody asked me, oh, about two years ago, well, who is the book written for? And I stood there and I looked at him and I said, everyone. <laughs> I said, there yes, are people, That's right. Yeah, people that are hurting. I mean, it's literally for everyone. In fact, um, there's five sections that are in like uh, several chapters that are just for ministering and helping prenatal situations, ch children, babies that are in the womb. It deals with that. It deals with babies, newborns. It deals with all the different types of trauma that can get a hold of a child and how parents can help that child. Well, you know, uh, you were talking to me uh, a couple months ago and you were talking about how uh, this book has already generated enormous interest 
in the medical community, in the therapy, in the secular realm, because they are looking for answers. And, the, and, and, yeah. and uh, there are answers. There are answers. God has answers. Yeah, I've got a friend that uh, she's in a, not a, con a normal church type of situation. And we've gotten to know each other the last couple of years. And she comes to our back gate because she loves our dog, Barney. And, you know, they walk there and talk and she's got two dogs of her own. And I told her about the book and she said, I have to have this book. Amen. And I said, but you need to understand this is biblical, spiritual, clinical, psychological, and self-help. She said, I don't care. I need this book. It's healing. God it is interested in healing his people in the whole world. He wants My whole neighborhood is asking for it. <laughs> Amen. Well, I believe... Well, we gonna tell tell us how we can get the book and 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 well, and one I, there's there's two things I'd like you to do. Of course, I, you can go on as long as you want, but two <laughs> things uh, the Lord kind of put in my heart. One is I want you to pray for those uh, of us that have, you know, I believe you're you didn't come on unarmed, and uh, you know, in other words, there's gifts of the Holy Spirit. God wants to touch if you're hurting tonight. He wants to touch you. He wants to exchange and make that that wonderful uh, exchange that comes through the cross yeah. And, yeah. and 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 remove and those piercings and all that. Yeah, it's I, I agree with that. That's one I, I've so seldom talked about this in the areas of that of the gifts of healing that specifically help to restore the inner person. Um, I've, I've seldom talked about it because what happens is that people, they start recognizing somebody has that and then they start pursuing them. And that's not what it is. But I had to tell stories about that during when I was writing the book. And um, I think the one that um, probably meant more to me than anything was a woman um, in England. And she was in her early 20s and she had been sexually assaulted uh, by family members several times. And the doctors told her she would never recover and her family tried to sweep it under the rug and said, we're not gonna deal with it. And she sat there and just the, the look of somebody that's been traumatized in those types of ways, you know, there's a, often a deadpan flat look to them, their face and their countenance. And, um, she said, do you think God would do anything? Would you pray for me? I said, exactly. Yeah. They get to that. I, I, yeah. I've, I, exactly where they, they lost their hope. Like they, it's not that they don't believe God can't do it. They just think, yeah. we just think, well, you know, it, it's been too much. It's too long. It's gone on. It's, it's too yeah. late. And that's the devil lying, isn't he? Yeah. He's lying. Yeah. And one of the greatest ways that trauma can overtake someone is if they don't have a, a correct understanding of knowing Jesus and knowing the character and the functions of God, because they start expecting the trauma and Satan oh, will cater to them, you know. But this young woman was unique because she said, do you think he would? And I said, yeah. I said, can I put my hand on your shoulder? See, there's, there's things you need to understand when you're praying for somebody that's got trauma that you don't just launch in and put your hand on them or whatever. If there's sexual abuse, you need to be very careful about touch. And so I have a whole chapter about the doctrine of laying on hands wow. and how to minister with the laying on hands, what to do, what not to do. And so I said, can I just put my hand on your shoulder? And she said, yeah. And I think I maybe got five words out. And it just came out of my mouth, Lord Jesus, I ask you, it. <clears throat> boom, the presence of God. It was like a warm wind that just came in and just hit her. And I, I didn't get hardly any words out. And she just looked at me. She said, it's gone. I said, yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, I can't take any claim for that. It was just Hallelujah. And hey, I, you know I, what the, the Lord just said to me? He said, I want, I want uh, Tamara to sing. I said, oh, okay. 
So I, I think you have a command performance from heaven. Well, we'll I, see I, what's gonna you happen. You said you brought your guitar. I, I, yeah, I don't mean to embarrass I, I, you. You still don't have to, but. No, but uh, eventually I'm just gonna have the studio set up where I can use a keyboard and do that too. But um, I, it's probably gonna happen. But like with her, she was set free totally. Yeah. And um, somebody told me, well, they can't be totally healed. They have to go through all sorts of counseling. I said, listen, she literally got healed totally. Mm -hmm. And that, that has happened where that presence of God just come and swept in. And but there's different ways that the Lord would use that. And uh, just the, the miracles that happened. And she just she's she ended up uh, meeting a young man, got married, was married a year later. Wow. Now, that doesn't normally happen in that kind of situation. That's right. And so you know, I, I could tell story after story like that. Oh, but yeah. um, in, the, in the book, then there's a chapter, several chapters about how the spirit of the Lord manifests everything that uh, he might do, how he works, how the spirit, what it feels like. I mean, looking at all the biblical content of that. So you can actually recognize when the spirit of God is working for healing someone. And sometimes it may seem almost hysterical because uh, like one woman, she was, she was suicidal. She didn't tell me until later, but she was suicidal. She had been through uh, cancer treatments, so discouraged. Then her mother died and then it was a family division. There was all sorts of stuff. And she and I were sharing a room at the conference that I was speaking at. She's also a minister. And she said, <laughs> she, uh, she said, well, you know, I'm going to stay up a little longer tonight. And I said, well, I've got like five meetings tomorrow speaking. I said, I probably better go to bed tonight. But I was praying. I said, Lord, how can I help this girl? I mean, what can I do? And he said, make her laugh. Amen. I said, make her laugh. And he said, yeah, he said, short sheet her bed. And <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you wouldn't have thought of that one. I no, I wouldn't have. He said, short sheet her bed. So she stayed upstairs in the kitchen. I was downstairs in the bedroom and I was ripping her covers back. I, I, that's she, a, I that's like a teenage me. prank. I remember. Oh, yeah, that yeah, it was. Me. It was hysterical. And I'm actually good at it. <laughs> I'm actually good at it. I've short cheated in like 10 countries. Oh, but my God. <laughs> well, that's terrible. <laughs> so I, I folded the sheets the way you do to make it short cheated and then pulled all the blankets back. And then I went and laid down. Well, I thought I got to fake that I'm asleep because I don't want her to know what's happened. So she comes down real quiet, you know, and I'm rolled over on my side facing the wall. So she can't see me. And I'm just laying there waiting. That's and terrible. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. She, she pulled the blanket back, started to get in bed, and her feet got stuck. Because I get it. She, the sheets were like a, a piece of pie that right in the middle. She could not get in the bed. And she said, what is this? What is this? She pulls it back and she said, why? It's been short sheeted. And I just lost it. I started laughing. And she <laughs> she started laughing. And then I started firing one line jokes, one after another, that were so stupid, they were almost too stupid to laugh at. Yeah. And I just kept one after another and after another and after another. And she laughed and laughed and laughed. And we laughed for about 45 minutes. Laughter is medicine. Is, God loves to laugh. With, he talks right, just like Mel heart. Brooks. Yeah. You know, what is this going? This rush of this. But it was that was tell him yeah. to sing in tune. It's so loud. I'm going back to bed, Gabriel. But but that's what happened. Sorry. She started laughing. And it broke the pre, uh, the power of that stuff. And then right. um the next morning, she told me she said. I have not laughed like that mm. in years. And she said, it broke whatever it was. What well, was trauma? It yeah. broke whatever oh, was. Glory, hallelujah. I mean, and it, that was, but you don't think about that, but that's part of the gift of healing because of how <laughs> God ministers to so many. It's not gift, it's gift, it's plural. And I, I could tell story after story after story like this. Me of course, too. I, I think I, I, 
you know yeah. what? And God sneaks it in a lot of times. Sometimes I, 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 you know, somebody said, well, you could really make a living if you were a comedian, you know, yeah. but, but, you know, it, <laughs> people need to laugh. Oh, they, yeah. they need to laugh and God yeah. laughs and heaven yeah. is full of joy and yeah. God likes to laugh. But, you know, it's, it's so interesting, Maurice, because you see, when, when people come to the thought of ministering to somebody that's trauma or trying to deal with their own, their own trauma, they don't know where to start. Right. And most of the time when they start talking about everything, it just gets, it accelerates and then they get caught in this entanglement of wow. their own words and their own thoughts and emotions. And so a lot of times, you know, some people say, well, you're not, you shouldn't have anybody talk about their trauma. It's, it's taken care of in Jesus. They shouldn't be digging it up. And then there's others say, well, you have to do all sorts of trauma uh, therapy through counseling and repeating, yeah. rehashing it. The well, other extreme is Freud, you know, going back to the, the, you know, and trying to relive it, try to make it better. And it doesn't yeah. happen. Well, the, the book also I've listed and then described the most common forms of psychological therapy for trauma, what works, what doesn't, why it works, what's godly, what's not in that. And the thing is, is these are things that people can do for themselves. And there's, there is, well, there's a deficit right now in the church that we don't even realize is a deficit. And you see, for the most part, when you look at people that struggle with trauma. I don't preach. I can tell you, I can go on about, never mind. <laughs> but anyway, there, are, <laughs> there are examples in scripture for people who were suffering trauma. And there was one thing that always worked. It was pouring their hearts out to the Lord, venting to the Lord instead of just venting to people. And eventually, like Elijah, you remember he was so down in the wilderness having or Job. I mean, Job yeah, had to get Job. It all out. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. they poured their out their heart out. And Psalms talks about David so pour out poured your out your heart. Yeah, yeah. David. But they used it. And you see, we've got a condition in the church right now where the altar is gone. Wow. And before oh we had God. therapy and counseling. The altar was the place that people went to pour out their hearts. People and don't even know what an altar is now. They tell us what an altar is. is. And see, we've become so personality driven that we have to have the minister, the person pray for us, but we don't know how to discharge it at the altar. And, you know, I, I know there's all sorts of reasons why we don't want to do it, but a lot of it, we're embarrassed. If we see somebody at the altar and pouring their heart out to God, we're embarrassed that they're doing it because it reminds us of where we've come from. And so I, one, I'm teaching people also in the book how to do that in their prayer life and their praise time, what to actually do so they can discharge that. But, right. you know, we're, we're in a place right now, there hasn't been really a movement for the altar for probably 75 years. Well, tell what. And, I actually, I'd like to know more of what, what is the altar? What, what, and why, uh, what, what is that? Uh, tell us. Well, tell us. For, for my understanding, spiritually and culturally and historically, the altar was a place up toward the front of the church <laughs> where someone could kneel down and call out to God. And it was public enough so other people could watch and pray for or with. And I, one of the things I think we've done such a disservice to people, we are so quick to lay hands on people that what happens is that we lift conviction off of them if they're needing to repent. Oh, they're they're crying. What is, well, they may need to cry that through because of the sorrow that repentance brings on. And But we put the hands on it, we lift that. And the same thing often happens. We we want to pray for people, or sometimes we push people so hard if they do come up for prayer, and they don't have any way to work it through. And that we're in such a hurry. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's the main. I mean, we're in such a hurry. Yeah, get, yeah. Get in, out, uh, drive, drive through. You know, it's inconvenient for somebody to go to the altar and pray. And so, because <laughs> it may take them an hour. And I find a lot of folks, it takes a minimum of 30 
minutes to an hour and a half to break through prayer at the altar in front. I've seen this for years, but we're not doing it. Because for whatever reason, we got to get the doors locked. We need to go out. We've got to go to the restaurant. We got to do all these different things. And, you know, uh, we've done this to ourselves. So, uh, you know, these are things that I'm teaching about specifically. And I'm saying we need to restore the altar in the church. Boy, that's, that, that's so true. You know, give people, you know, they may still need therapy. They may still need counseling. But there was an, there's a, a memory. I was in Israel 1996. And there was a young Korean woman who, it was in the meetings. I'd been speaking for two weeks. Mm-hmm. And she had gone forward and made that front area into an altar. And she knelt down. I have never seen the sincerity mm-hmm. or the determination to break through that I saw with her. Yeah. And I watched her for about 45 minutes, didn't lay hands on her because that would have been a distraction. She needed to have that time with God and in a place where there was accountability and where there was fellowship and support. And it was about five years, no, three years after that, I had reached a place in my life. I had had so much distress, so much rejection, so many different things had gone on. I thought, I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. And praise was breaking me through in those things. But I didn't know what to do. And I I looked at a magazine at a friend's house, listed the 10 symptoms of depression, and I had 11. I mean, it was just that. I can give you more. You want more? (laughs) So I, I made the decision to go to the Lord and said, God, I'm not leaving here until I get that kind of breakthrough. Amen. And there, there was, it was about an hour and a half to two hours every morning. And so there's this whole chapter in the book on how to develop that devotional life to where that you get breakthrough. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just, but we've gotten ourselves in this condition. So there's a lot of things that if you say, the old well, Pentecostals had this secret, they understood that. I mean, the, the, the old, the 75 years ago and more, I yeah. mean, that was kind. They understood that. Didn't the they? early Methodists did too. Yes, yes. The Baptists and, and some different denominations to hold it. So there's truths and character that's necessary. Even the Catholic Church, sometimes with the confessional, oh, there's okay. a discharging of the things that need to be discharged. That the priest is not the one that does forgiveness. Jesus is the one that does that. But the point is the practice of these kinds of things. And so to say that there's one formula for helping somebody starting down the road of trauma, there's not, everybody is different. And everyone has a different approach that God wants to use for them. And, you know, whether a person's born again or not, they still cry out for help. And so that's, you know, that's one of the things, but I, I look for all of these different things, like when I'm trying to help people. So there's, it's not step by step. It'd be great if it was. <laughs> it's not a formula, but there are things that God has provided that people can do and they don't have to stay stuck. My goal is not just to get them healed. My goal is to get to them to be preemptive. So when they you rest, don't have to stay stuck, hallelujah. And also to recognize when trauma is coming. You know, Proverbs yeah. 22, verse 3, it says, the prudent person recognizes evil and hides himself Hides himself, right when you mentioned psalms 83 i've been thinking about this all day too today wow in psalms you remember in psalms 83 and this is really interesting what what where it says this just a second it talks about the hidden ones and if you if you remember it says um for lo, your enemies make a tumult, verse two, uh, verse two, and they that hate thee have lifted up thy head. Verse three, they have crafted counsel. They have cr- taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted against your hidden ones. Wow, and, what is that? I didn't see that before. Oh, it's powerful. I mean, when you start looking at the secret place, 
being hidden in the shadow of his wing, being hidden in the secret place of the Most High, being hidden under the, the shadow of the Almighty, being hidden under his wings, being hidden in the, um, the secret of his presence, being hidden in the secret of he his power. He hideth my soul oh. in the cleft of the rock. And the rock and the, the shield and the fortress and the high place. I mean, these are all hiding places. Yes. And, it, and there's a whole section on here about how to learn to live in that secret place. Because we can be preemptive. Jesus didn't just say that you can, uh, you know, you just have to suffer through it. He said, don't let, don't permit. That means your will is involved. Amen that don't permit your heart to be traumatized. And so, like I said, for every person it's different, but you know, I was thinking this afternoon as I've been praying for this meeting tonight, mm -hmm. I've been thinking a lot about the secret place. Yes. And, and when you start praying and talking about Israel and that secret place, Israel is a nation that's traumatized and it's a oh. generation that's traumatized. Oh yeah. And you look at the young people, there's there's trauma in all of these young people's faces. I, I was on the bus one time going from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv. Yeah. And while we were going there, my guide I had a private guide and everything. And, and she said, look around you. She said, this is a traumatized generation. And, you know, I was working on the book and I was thinking about it. And I've been thinking about it a lot because since 2000, uh, <laughs> Well, well, since the World Trade Center and that uh, the bombings, uh, the airplanes that crashed into well, the, the whole Trade Antifada Center. as well. Yeah, and, right after, yeah. yeah, yeah, that all that stuff caused a state because they kept seeing the images of this over and over again. That's why ministry to our young people is so crucial. That they kept seeing the same images over that, and I can't remember the percentage right off the top of my head, but there's a huge percentage of young people from that generation that have PTSD that started on that day in September. I should and know what that is a little more. What is P it's PTSD? It's post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, now, yeah, yeah. I think, advanced. okay. It's okay. a more advanced form of trauma. Wow. And uh, more, more difficult to deal with. But honestly, in most cases, biblically, if you do these other things and walk these other things through, the, the healing will manifest. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying that, that there's not individuals. I've got uh, people from the military that are talking to me about this and saying, we've got to have this book. And from the military, what? from the military, yeah, because of post traumatic stress disorder, the, the soldiers, yes, were. so the military's been contacting you too. Well, soldiers and different ones that are so struggling right now, and they, right. They, and you know, there's so many things that trigger trauma, <clears throat> and so you know, I'm looking at all of these different aspects of this, and somebody said, Well, what's the formula? Well, not one for one person. They're all different. But the thing is, is that if you're hearing from God and if you're desperate for him to work, he'll give you tools to turn it around. There's there's all sorts of things that can be done. There's always a way out, isn't there? Yeah, but always. it doesn't really feel that way. <laughs> it doesn't feel that way. No. Almost, you know, there. it's like you have to, you still have to walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah. And that's where the... That's where the, you know, I was listening to, uh, I don't mean to get you off top topic, just a comment. I was listening. Uh, I've been listening a lot to uh, uh, Kenneth Copeland's Victory Channel, uh, especially because of the things that happened in my life since January, you know, and, and, yeah, and yeah. attacks things. But <clears throat> there was a, a show that in 2016 that pastor george pearson's and and gloria copeland had it was wonderful but he talks about the idea of immersion i love that i just saw that this afternoon so it's yeah. kind of fresh but total immersion in in the promises in the word of yeah. god and 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 how that some you know and <clears throat> that immersion has been my life for for yeah. 30, 40 years, it's the immersion that uh, uh, <clears throat> when you don't know what to do, <laughs> you can always, you you know, and, and that's such a resource, it's such a tool. But yeah. anyway, I, I want you to <clears throat> tell us 
how to get your book and <laughs> and uh, and we need to make it easy on people nowadays or they 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 don't seem to want to anyway but <clears throat> so just tell us how to get this uh wonderful yeah. book the just drama. go to my website www.tamrawinslow.com and uh, there's just go to the shop and it'll pull up it's the first item right now in the shop because it's the newest pro um um thing that i'm offering would you hold up the picture real close so we can see the cover Oh, yeah. This was designed by a dear friend of mine. I think she's watching tonight. Um, Babette Biddlecom. She did. Oh, the I know her. And then I Jonathan and she worked together on the design of it. But I know her. Yeah, she's I know you know her. <laughs> she's, uh, I think she's their messianic as well. Or they're oh, yeah, yeah. In Tulsa. Yeah. 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 So anyway, wow. she did the design of the, the painting. Oh, wow. and I think she chose the fonts and then Jonathan put it together. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, the difficulty is that sometimes my concern of, for my heart was, is that because it has the crown of thorns and the, the nails, it could be difficult for Jewish folks to want to take this. And, and some people said, well, why don't you take it off of it? And I thought, well, no, it's okay. I can't do that. That's not, that's going to compromise the message of what God has said to do. Well, but, no, we, we can't be ashamed of the cross, period. Yeah. It, that was the great exchange. I mean, that was, yeah. uh, but I like that you, I, I see now uh, as I look closer that the curtain has yeah. been the lifted. Drama. <clears throat> Tell us about that curtain a little bit. Uh, well, um, what does it mean? Well, the curtain is the first, this is the first volume of the book, okay? And it's just partially open because Trauma is very much like a theater drama. There's a script, there's characters in the cast, wow. there's a villain, there's all sorts of different things. And so I wanted to put that in there with the curtain just partially open and then seeing that at the entrance, and it's actually to show that there's an answer for this drama. Um, one of my friends wrote and she said, uh, she said, it's not just a... Um, uh, a drama she said dramas a trauma does not have it is a drama but trauma does not have to be a tragedy and i said that's the thing that people have to get through their their understanding yes, there's their never there's never a uh, hopelessness yeah a despair with the lord there's yeah. always hope there's always a way out he'll make a way of escape he always does well, one of the biggest foes of getting people set free from trauma is confronting self-pity because oh. a lot of times when they get in that cycle of the trauma and the drama, then they start feeling sorry for themselves. And then they just, it's a constant decline from that. I've point. been guilty of that many well, times. All of us have. Yeah. All of us have, but I talk about then how self-pity works and then how to get out of it. Um, I, I tell you a story, but I was going to read you. I've got a couple endorsements back here. If, is yeah. it okay? Can I read you those? Uh, Dr. I want you to play for us, though. Would no, you no, please? No, 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 no. Would you? Not later. No, afterwards. Afterwards. No, no. I will. I will. Towards well, the God. end and play and pray. That's what yeah. God says. I will. <laughs> okay. I will. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Bill Foe, who is a co founder of Legacy Worship International, contacted me about oh, seven or eight years ago. And he'd been invited by the president of the country of Burundi to come and take the murder out of their hearts. Wow. He called me and he said, Tamara, what am I going to do? He said, these are things that are dealing with trauma. And so I don't know how many hours I talked to him. Well, then he wrote this. And um, he said, like Moses' first generation, we've been waiting for this book. It's the, re it's the result of lifelong study and sacrifice laid at the feet of Christ. Uh, Mark Sharona, Bishop Mark Sharona wrote, Dr. Tamara's comprehensive work, The Drama of Trauma, is a must read. Um, Cheyenne Mole Anthony, pastor of International Gospel Center in Tulsa. As I don't a pastor, know her. No. Yeah, you know her. I do? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, she's even going to watch you tonight, I think. As a pastor, I, I ought to know who I know, and I know anyway. Sorry, <laughs> okay, I'd say as that pastor, again. Sorry. She said, As a pastor, I'm recommending this book because in it, I found for those that I'm called to serve, 
and desperately want to see set free. And Michael French, um, one of the main or well-known evangelists for the Assembly of God, he wrote one of the most important books you will read in your entire life. Oh, I mean, that, hey. That's how, these are leaders that are really very, very behind it. But um, I, I wanted to share this because this goes with Praise music. That's Lord. why I brought my guitar. Praise um, the Lord. One of the, the most, one of the most powerful tools and weapons against trauma is praise and worship. Amen. And any of the actions, lifting hands, clapping, kneeling, bowing, prostrating yourself, singing, shouting, all these different things. Dancing, they are, they're weapons. Now we've, yep. We've gotten into a place in our culture, though, where that praise and worship is being worshipped. And oh. when you worship the weapon you set yourself up for major major problems because or it or it's getting our focus off of the yeah. object of worship i mean yeah. who yeah. Yeah. yeah the lord yeah hmm. yeah yeah and jesus then isn't the center of it and in second chronicles chapter 20 you remember the story of moab ammon and mount seir that surrounded jerusalem and they'd been raiding village and city after another and and jehoshaphat whose name is jehovah is judge cried out before the Lord. And he said, will you not hear us? And he, he just began to cry out and will you not judge them? Um, he said, we don't know what to do. And that's where people are at with trauma. They don't know what to do. And they have to learn to focus their eyes. And then the Lord spoke to them through uh, the, the one of the Levites, Jehaziel, who then began to prophesy and that they would gather all of the singers and all the musicians, all the Levites dressed in the long white linen clothing to march out in front of the army, praising the Lord. And the For the story, Lord is good and his yes, mercy and endureth forever. Yeah. Yeah. And they uh, they just, uh, they did that. And the enemy turned on himself. Yeah. And there was a couple years back, my husband and I, he was, we were having financial difficulties and um, his job was just killing him. It was horrible. And I was sitting here in my office at the desk and I was working on a book called The Praise and Worship Compendium, Volume 1. It's on the website too. But um, I was working on that and the spirit of the Lord spoke to me because I was so discouraged. And I said, God, what are we supposed to do? He said, will you just lift your hands and praise me? <laughs> it was almost a rebuke. <laughs> I said, okay. And I didn't feel like it. I mean, that's actually the best time to praise because when you make yourself praise, you shift gears. It affects your brain. And so I lifted my hands. I just start praising him and thanking him for all the different things. And the next thing I knew, I heard Michael walk in the door and he, he was standing at the bottom of his, uh, at the stairway. And I said, you got fired. He said, yeah, I got fired. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he, <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> and, we, and we were both rejoicing because that job was killing him. And wow. so we were, we talked about it and he's, and I didn't tell him what I had done. I didn't tell him. I said, Lord, I release it to you. I discharge these needs to you. And I praise you. And I thank you that the answers are mine in Jesus name. And had to do this many different times in many different situations. Well, there's a wonderful, I, there's a wonderful anointing that's, that's uh, fallen on you or put, put is, is on you. Right. I, I just, yeah. I can, I can sense it. And uh, wow. You're going well, to that's the music's going to come in here. Oh, okay. Second. Yeah. So you're going to help us. I know. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. So anyways, they lifted, he, we lift, I lifted my hands, but I didn't tell Mike that I'd done that. Well, unbeknownst to me when he was at work that morning, sitting by himself in the cubicle in the place, um, he just said, God, bring me out of Egypt, please. I'm enslaved. I'm in all these kinds of things deliver me from Egypt. The next morning he got fired and he had not known about it. And then the next day, someone wrote us and said, we're supposed to send you $20,000. I oh, said, send it on. Hey, <laughs> I like that. That's good. 
but but the Lord provided. But it, but He kept saying to me, "Will you just praise me?" And to make the choice. Now I've taught on praise and worship thousands and thousands of hours, and, and the Praise Compendium Volume One. There's like eighteen thousand hours of work in that book. You and know, so a lot of people don't know also, or that maybe they don't know that you're you've. You're a psalmist and, and a composer as well. Oh. You're like a Renaissance woman. I, <laughs> and, uh, and you you play the piano and you oh. sing. Hallelujah. God well, did that. It's one of the most powerful tools that deals with trauma. Genuine praise and worship. And I find that most people, when it comes to praise and worship, sing at the Lord instead of to him. That's and so they, true. They don't know how to convert music to a place where it's a release. It's a discharge. It's a release unto the Lord. And oh yeah, I'm, that's 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 wow. That's that's uh, sila. Yeah. yeah, that's really. <laughs> it say, really would is. you say that again, just okay. for me? <laughs> they don't know how to convert the music into the praise and worship to the Lord and discharge. <laughs> What's in their heart to him through that? Because when you're not feeling like praising, the choice of praise overrides the feelings of praise. Sacrifice of praise. We yeah. bring, remember that was sacrifice. Yeah, and, and you know, Psalms 50, I think it's verse 14 or 15, where it's the Hebrew word todah, which is thank you in Israel today. <laughs> but, but it's a type of praise with a throwing out of the hands and letting go of the needs and then thanking him for the answer. Amen. And, you know, I, I had a situation with this book. I, I, I knew God had promised me different things. And um, I thought, now, how am I going to pay for printing this? And one more, uh, yeah, one morning I was downstairs and I just said, God, send forth the ministering angels you've assigned to me and bring the money in. Amen. And the next, the next day, I got an email from someone that said, we're supposed to send you not da 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 And I went, it almost sounded too good to be true. And so oh, to the wow. point at, well, there's- I love there's, those kind of yeah. emails. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. So I'm hoping my guitar is still in tune. <laughs> well, you can go ahead and tune. I'm, you know, whatever you want. Uh, did you bring it up? You said- it's your fault, though, uh, Tamara, because because you said it. You said I bring my car. You know, I remember uh, Pastor Benny. You know, don't tell him you got your instrument because he'll make you get it out and play in front of ten, twenty thousand people. You know, it's it's so <laughs> so anyway. But it's one of the most powerful tools for healing. Yeah. especially for dealing with trauma. You remember when King Saul had been traumatized by that evil spirit? That's right. And David just played. It doesn't say David sang. It said he played. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, he, uh, he, hey, sometimes it, we, there's a place for us instrumentalists too. Yeah, because right? there's different types of instrumental praise. That is bringing, that's that delivering power. And the anointing is just so precious right now. Amen. I, I feel it. This first song that I got about eight months ago, I haven't shared it with anybody else, so, but this was to be for tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. In the morning I will praise you, and the evening I will worship. In the morning I will sing a brand new song. And every time I think of you, my heart resounds in worship to know you through and through. Is where my heart belongs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to my King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You're my everything. Let my power now fall on you where my spirit does abide that i will heal your spirit and i'll teach you how to hide in the shadow of my wing in the shadow of my hand i will cause you to rise in triumph to go in and possess the land my healing power flows my healing power flows now to me says the spirit of the lord i will set your heart free Sing with me bless the name of the lord let your mercy manifest for you always give the best even when we're in our test if we lift our hands speak it out now to you, Lord, I lift my hands to you, Lord. Okay, we had to fix that. Oh, it's the Lord. Jesus. By the power of your hand, oh Lord, stretch forth your power to touch each person hearing this and heal them in this hour. Let the trauma be reversed. Let the curses be undone. Let the healing of your spirit, Lord, manifest here has done through the sun. The I carried the crown of thorns, <clears throat> so you won't have to. I wore the thorns upon my brow, so you wouldn't have to. And my hands and feet were pierced. And my back was striped with sores, but I carried each and everything for you. Praise from your heart. Give him all your praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 Put your hands out in front of you and put the trauma that's there in your hands. And give them to it right now. Give them to him right now, Jesus. Don't let him go. So your hands are empty and start thanking him. Start practicing that aspect of the sacrifice of praise.
Hallelujah. 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 Let the anointing of the Spirit now be. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah. to worship. To praise you, Jesus. It's greater than everything. I am lifted up. It's holy to God. It's the Lord is healing um, <coughs> healing people all over over the world. This had nothing to do with uh, even those watching <coughs> or those uh, it, Angels, I just see so many angels released. <laughs> They're going all over multitudes and uh, bringing healing, bringing healing to Lord, bringing healing in Israel, bringing <clears throat> bringing healing uh, to trauma. That's exactly. Yes. Oh my, uh, bringing healing in the inner cities. God is just going, coming by his fear, spirit right now and touching. Do you know the grand finale has begun? It's just the devil can't, can't stop it. So praise God. Oh, we praise you for, <clears throat> we praise you, Father, for reaching out to multitudes and bringing them to peace, to shalom, in Yeshua's name, amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. <clears throat> Are you uh, getting anything from the Lord, uh, Tamara? You I can speak it out. If you... hymn, an old hymn. Come on. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided Jesus. No, no turning back. No turning back. <laughs> You know, we've had a, a bit of a <clears throat> um, trouble with the signal and the music. Uh, I don't know, uh, but I do, I, I, I couldn't hear everything, uh, but we'll, we'll fix that. Uh, 
for next time. It's just a, a bandwidth situation, I think. But anyway, hallelujah. What a, what a glorious time. And, and uh, uh, I would like to uh, thank you, uh, Tamara. Um, I, 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 it, your sound was going in and out. So I, uh, and uh, there's a delay in, on the signal. So I'm not sure. Uh, are you hearing me right now? Yeah, I am hearing you fine. Oh, good. I, oh, you know, the enemy's just trying to, to put a monkey wrench into it. But let me tell you something that was powerful. And, you know, just for that, we're going to, we're going to make sure we get, get you on again. And uh, we, we get to hear the music. And uh, I don't know if it was just me or it was uh, the, 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 it might have to do with the Zoom call is what it, you know. No, some, I think it was her mic, something with her mic. Oh, we'll, we'll fix we'll, it. We'll re-record it. We'll, we'll, you know what? We'll fix it. And uh, we just have to have you on again. That's all for the music part. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if it would work. So that's why I. It was, it was good. It was right. And I'm glad you did it. And I'm, I'm, it was a tremendous release of healing, a tremendous, I, I, it was just awesome. I was having a vision the whole time. I was, I was seeing, I was seeing uh, so many angels, angelic activity, and uh, God is, is, is really moving. And uh, let us know if, if you're, if you're, uh, in tune or you're, you're watching this later as well uh, let us know if uh what happened ring uh, let us know the testimonies and and uh again um oh i'm sorry <laughs> yeah i'm looking down at the uh my monitor but i have to look at the um thank you tamra thank you for uh and uh we're we're going to I'm going to do all I can to uh, to let others know about this wonderful book, and I don't I I don't think it's going to be uh, hard to. I mean, it's going to just God's going to just uh, send it around the world, and and I think as well you have it in ebook form if if you need it's it. Not released in the ebook yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, I, it's I, not it's coming out in probably two weeks. It's uh, just taking a lot of time. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know what? Hallelujah. It's, it's we're going to, we, uh, that's just the, this is just the, the start. I got to, I got to do the, one of the inaugural uh, <laughs> ones. That's all uh, evenings tonight. Thank you for sharing with us. Wow. That was well, so good. I ministered to you and uh, thanks so much for inviting me and letting people know about the book too. Oh, of course. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, I just want to, <clears throat> uh, gosh, I, I'm kind of, kind of lost in the, <laughs> lost in the spirit right now. Um, I need to, oh, I need to bless you to say good night. And, um, uh, is there anything else that, uh, uh, you'd like to, to, to share, uh, to, I for us I shared what i was supposed to i i had these scriptures and they came out and then you confirmed what it was in the the secret place and i mean each one of these subjects is so massive and uh people just they've not most of the time they've never even been taught the most basic of the things but that can help them get through this and overcome trauma because we can find Amen. It. well we're gonna uh we we have uh you can go to Tamara Winslow.com. That's T A M A R A. Winslow is W I N Win, but she's not slow. She's fast. S L O W. <laughs> I want to. It's on there. Yeah, at dot com. And it's on the, also, it's on yeah. my uh, uh, website. Uh, sorry, uh, on my, uh, I'm kind of drunk in the spirit right now. Sorry. Uh, it's on the, uh, the broadcast here, the Facebook, and we'll put it on our YouTube and everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, hallelujah. So <laughs> get the book and, uh, you know, um, yes, I'm going to, yes. Abba Father, yeah. in Yeshua's name, mm -hmm. I bless your people now. <clears throat> 
May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord give you shalom, his shalom peace. Peace in Israel. Peace in Jerusalem. Peace in Israel. Peace in the body of Messiah. Peace in every nation. Hallelujah. And may the, as Paul wrote, 1 Corinthians, may the grace of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion and the fellowship, the koinonia, the, the intimacy of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever, dear ones. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for, for tuning in tonight. And thank you, Dr. Tamara. And uh, uh, I want to see you in person, real, but Devor and I want to see you again. So we'll, we'll have to get together soon. And, and uh, we're, this will, you know what I want to do? I want to somehow, let's find a way to do a worship time together with my violin and you singing or at the piano, whatever you want. And we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to do that, or maybe it's in person and, and, and whatever the technology uh, bandwidth <clears throat> issues, but we're going to fix it so that, hallelujah, I want to worship with you. And uh, wow. Oh, We've had fun before. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for all that you've done. And uh, we'll have to say good night now. So uh, shalom, y'all. <laughs> good night. Have a wonderful evening. And oh, oh, yes. Uh, you know what? While you're at it, uh, bless Tamara. Bless her. Send her something, you know, send her some a gift or whatever. She doesn't ask for it. She doesn't even want it. She won't even say, but uh, I want you to sew. I'm gonna I'm gonna sew myself something to uh, what I can tonight and uh, bless her ministry. Um, uh, can can you at least let us know what uh, that is? Uh, where she there's a dress or a, a, some way of, of um, doing there, that. There's actually a donation card on my website. Okay, yeah. so we'll uh, just go there and and do it, and uh, God will bless you. This is pure gold. This is some of the best uh, sowing soil I know of. So I want to, so I want to get my seed in there too, and we want to bless her. And how, hallelujah! We just pray that God would multiply this book and send it around the world and, and help as many as as we can. Hallelujah! Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to say good night. <laughs> so uh, have a wonderful evening. I will be back uh, for another Beit Rafa broadcast. It will be uh, the next one, I think, will probably be uh, perhaps, perhaps tomorrow, but definitely are for our Shabbat service Friday night. And uh, uh, we're going to going to continue just flow with what God wants. It's such a, a privilege. It's such a pleasure to just be with you tonight. Hallelujah. May you be strengthened and may God just take away the trauma from our lives. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. All right. Good night. Good night. Shalom. Shalom. God bless. <laughs>